ladies and gentlemen, let's Gaming to the Telecom video. Let us discuss the PlayStation 4 versus Xbox One 2014 game lineup, specifically from the point of view of Shuhai Yoshida. So, if there's one criticism that's been leveled at both next generation systems, and I certainly hold my hand up here, um, I've been certainly throwing a few curveballs at both next gen systems for this exact same point. I don't think that the lineup so far has been exactly must-have. It's nice, and it's about what you would expect given the age of the systems, but it's not enough, in my opinion, to make you think to yourself, I definitely need this system right now. And indeed, if you were to look at E3, there were a couple of nice-looking games, definitely, but overall, I think it's fair to say that 2014 has some sporadic releases. Around Christmas time, as one would expect, it starts to get a bit busier, but in terms of platform exclusives in particular, for both next-gen systems, it's a bit thin on the ground, and there's a couple of reasons behind that, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But what does Sony think of this? What does Shuhai think of this? Well, he believes that of course, the PS4 is doing very well against the Xbox One. His exact quote was, Very, very well. Games like Destiny is coming out. The Last of Us HD. It's a new game to play for people who didn't play on the PS3. One amazing statistic, at least to me, was published by Nielsen a couple of months ago. They researched the PS4 and reported that 17% of PS4 owners had never owned the last gen. A completely new consumer who skipped a generation, 32% additionally did not own a PS3, but they owned a 360 or a Wii. He's actually mentioned that before, just in case you unfamiliar with that. And indeed, almost 50% of people who had purchased a PS4 did not own a PS3, and that's lots of people who missed exclusive PS3 games like The Last of Us. So it's the great opportunity to go back to those games if you've missed them. And then he added that there are requests from some consumers for games that release later in the generation like Uncharted, which people may have missed. That would have been a good candidate, but we don't want to flood the market for remade games either. And this is in reference to the PlayStation Now, which of course is a streaming service. But... Obviously, they don't want to flood the marketplace necessarily with tons and tons of remakes because some people are already being a bit annoyed with that whole idea. And so, basically, they're going to have to rely on PlayStation Now to play those rather than remastering every single major PS4, uh, PS3 title. And then they added, we decided to call it PlayStation DV because it does way more than play PS Vita games and it used and used with a PS4 with a companion device, it's a really strong proposition. So that's why we call it PlayStation TV. Uh, this was an interview which was posted today from Eurogamer. Um, and indeed, this even goes on to say that there are lots of new Vita games. You can just go out and find little gems, and there are lots of exciting games. But it's not about the individual games, it's more about how Vita can have multiple uses with PS4 right play, PS3 games, and PS Now, dedicated games, the whole ecosystem, the PS4 at the center. The Vita is a part of that. So what, my personal opinions, and you could definitely see a few major... Uh, shifts in the PlayStation and Sony's thinking. First of all, I think the main one that you can definitely tell from the last few sentences were to do with the PlayStation Vita. Originally, the PS Vita was being marketed as its own console, very much they like the 3DS. But now it's being almost like considered the little brother of the PS4. And it's kind of strange because I put out another video out yesterday um, based on Japan and how the console market there is starting to stagnate. It's weird because the PlayStation Vita is actually selling really well there, but the PS4, not so much. So the Vita is actually doing pretty well, but in the remainder of the world, so for example the United States, Canada, um, Europe and so on, what we're actually seeing is the PS4 doing extremely well and the Vita almost maligned. It's almost considered to be like, eh, it's a nice accessory. And personally speaking, I don't personally feel that there's a massive strong lineup of games, it's particularly for those of us who have multiple TVs in the house. It's, you know, it's nice to do the streaming and stuff, but meh. So, moving on to the bigger picture here. Um, there are a couple of points. Destiny, for example, 
I don't really know why Sony keeps citing Destiny for the PlayStation as a part of the lineup. Sure, I understand that it is going to... It's going to be on the, the Xbox One and PS4, and I understand that, yes, it will be a part of the PlayStation 4's lineup, but it's not exclusive, so I don't really understand why he keeps mentioning or Sony as a whole keeps mentioning it. I don't really feel that cross-platforms are that... Um, uh, that big of a deal on yes you might get for example slightly higher resolution on the ps4 version or whatever but at the end of the day it's still the same experience i've also heard the same comment being made a couple of times over regarding the remasters and there are two different ways that you can take the remastering um, and this was actually first brought up back on Tomb Raider, the definitive edition, and there's been a lot of people who have been saying Tomb Raider, the cash in edition, and various other funny um, derivatives of names. And here's the thing, it's like, I think the Tomb Raider was one of those games that was a bit silly to remaster, because at the end of the day, it was still arguable is it better than the PC version? Well, for my companion testing, the frame rate was not bad on the PlayStation 4 version, but did dip. Um, PC version had definitely high resolution textures, better anti-aliasing, and so on. Yes, the PS4 version had slightly nicer facial looking textures, and yes, it had um, better Tress FX, it had a more advanced Tress FX, where the performance of the PC, it doesn't really make a difference, because even a mid-range GPU now is capable of like 1080 or 4, 1440p with Tress FX enabled at as high frame rate as the PS4, maybe even higher in many cases. But definitely the Tress FX 2, um, which is obviously a later, more advanced version of Tress FX, which is incorporated on the PS4 and Xbox One version. Unfortunately, for some reason or another, it wasn't part of the PC code, and they didn't bother to update it via a patch or whatever. That did look better. The hair behaved a lot more naturally. So I can understand the arguments regarding that. But the other remasters, the exclusives in particular, I don't really have a problem with them per se, as long as they're done in a good manner. I believe The Last of Us, um, I'm not 100% on this, but I think when I checked last, it was about £10 cheaper than a typical PS, uh, PS4 game. So that's not too bad, to be honest. I was really expecting it just to be the standard pricing, but it's a bit cheaper, which isn't too bad, although I don't personally like the pre-order bonuses that you'd get with it. I think they might be a bit too much, but that's a that's a different topic in its entirety. So I don't really have an issue with that. I don't necessarily know, however. I mean, basically, Microsoft are state, uh, stating that, you know, E3 is definitely the most important. Sony, on the other hand, are pushing towards the sale. So it's typical console war tactics. And that, that's not to say that either company don't respect one another, because they have. Both Phil Spencer and uh, Shuhai have actually mentioned mutual respect for the other company, which is kind of part and parcel of what you would say now in competition with the other company. But I feel that, as a whole, the E3 of both companies was fairly arguable who won. Personally speaking, and this is said as a PlayStation, not an Xbox owner, personally speaking, I think that Microsoft's E3 conference was slightly better I think that a lot of the focus they put towards the television stuff on the PlayStation conference somewhat skewed it. And that's not to say that I think they lost by a lot. I don't think it was a landslide. I do feel that it was very arguable um, who won. But I felt, I felt that the PlayStation... I, it was obvious as, as another point that both companies were holding stuff back as well. Um, but I did feel that the... Xbox One's announcements were ever so slightly larger. Just my personal opinion. But content and uh, mutual exclusives aside, you know, if you look at the cross-platform games, they're very much interchangeable. Unfortunately, neither company is really pushing that many exclusives at the moment. You know, there are some, definitely. For example, Infamous Second Son, you've got the Halos and so on. But it's definitely going to take a while, I feel, Certainly into 2015, maybe even 16 for the first party machine and a lot of the really big titles to start kicking into gear. And not to mention, of course, the fact that it's going to take a while for developers to get to grips 
on the hardware enough to where we can really say that we're experiencing next generation visuals. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.